I'll give you the CNN headline. Exclusive, though. Not sure if that's true. Um, Biden administration to accuse Russia of sustained effort to influence the 2024 election. The report says that the Biden administration today will accuse Russia of trying to influence this election right now by using Kremlin-run media and other online platforms to target U.S. voters with disinformation citing six sources familiar with the matter. They say the U.S. will make a series of moves today aimed at addressing the Kremlin's efforts, including the White House publicly condemning the actions, and Justice announcing law enforcement action targeting the covert Russian campaign. RT, the Russian state media network, is a major focus of the U.S. announcement. They go on to say the actions would be the Biden administration's most significant public response yet, to alleged Russian influence operations targeting American voters, um, a reminder that U.S. officials continue to see Russia as a prominent foreign influence threat to November's election. Today, Merrick Garland is going to meet with senior law enforcement leaders, including FBI Director Christopher Wray, about this. And I go, I'm reading and reading and reading. I don't know how many paragraphs in, my, in I am. Before I get to, let's see, one of these last... Okay, one of the last paragraphs of the piece, Glenn, which reads, again, on CNN. But any foreign or domestic attempts to sow discord during the U.S. election and shape voters' opinions don't change the fact that the voting process is very difficult to tamper with and protected by layers of defenses. (laughs) They go on from there. What do you make of what they're doing now? I think everybody knows what to make of it, given the discussion we just had over the past 33 minutes. Yeah, I was just laughing because Jim Acosta went onto Twitter and he had this big cap, this big capital letter, breaking, exclusive. The Biden administration set to accuse Russia of interfering in the election, as though no one could have predicted that coming. Only Jim Acosta was the <laughs> one who got that information. You wind up a Democrat, and they accuse everybody of being a Russian agent. There was an interview with Nancy Pelosi at the at the beginning of January where there were pro Palestinian protesters outside of her house. And she said, I think these are sent by Vladimir Putin, by the Kremlin. Now, ignore whatever you think of pro-Palestinian protesters. The idea that young college students are protesting a war because somehow the Kremlin engineered that is is like a form of psychosis. But this is what they do. But the other really interesting part of this, Megan, is that there is also evidence that the CIA, that the intelligence community has affirmed that both China and Iran are also both trying to interfere in the election. And and in part, it's because, I hope this isn't shocking, but all great powers, including the United States, try and interfere in each other's domestic politics. But if you look at, the reason they're highlighting Russia is because it's already in the public mind that Russia wants to help Trump. But what about Iran and China? Iran looks at the Democrats and the Republicans and see that it was Trump that terminated the Iran deal. And the Democrats want to re-enter it. Who do you think they would favor in the 2024 election? Obviously, the Democrats who want better relations. You look at the Chinese and they see Trump as having instigated this kind of trade war, imposing massive tariffs on China. And then they see the Democratic Party completely in bed with a lot of the funding that comes from China. But that's not useful to the media narrative because both of those countries, if really given a preference, would probably want the Democrats to win. If I were China and Iran, I know I would. So, but, but the bigger issue is that in the context of the billions of dollars that are spent on our election, of the endless amounts of American media propaganda that emanates from every pore of the American media, of all the information that American gets, these, quote, interference campaigns, a few fake page pages on Facebook, a few bots on, on Twitter, in comparison to everything else, have a trivial, minuscule, barely measurable effect on anything. It's all about the narrative, though, that if you vote for Trump, you're essentially voting for the candidate that Vladimir Putin wants to win. And also setting the stage for someone to blame if she loses other than themselves. Here's just a bit of the media coverage today in response to this reporting and the the, the reporters. They know what to do. Watch. The Biden administration is expected to accuse Russia of a sustained effort to influence the 2024 elections. Sources now telling us exclusively 
that uh, the Biden administration is set to accuse publicly, accuse publicly Russia of extensive and prolonged interference in the 2024 election. The Biden administration taking a series of actions to target what they allege are attempts by Russian-backed actors to manipulate public opinion here in the U.S., ahead of the presidential election. Uh, this is a, an effort by the, by the administration to get ahead of what uh, the Russians are, are alleg allegedly doing uh, ahead of this uh, 2024 election. And the tools that they are using to do so are Kremlin-run media and online platforms. We know that RT, which is one of the uh, Russian state-run media TV outlets, is going to be a focus of the announcement today. So this is being described by our sources as a whole-of-government action designed to target Russian propaganda and disinformation aimed at interfering in the 2024 election. It is said to include sanctions by the Treasury Department, law enforcement action by the Justice Department. Okay, I don't do drugs, but I can only imagine that this is what it's like. Like, it's the same thing as a heroin addict shooting heroin into his arm. That's what those guys are like when they hear Russia. <laughs> It's, you can see the euphoria wave over them, Glenn. They can't get to their cameras fast enough. Oh, yeah. The glee pours out of their pores. I mean, first of all, they're blaming RT. Do you know anyone who watches RT? It's almost impossible <laughs> no. to find RT, even if you wanted to. In fact, the EU made it illegal at the start of the war in Ukraine even to platform RT. The reason a platform like Rumble is unavailable in France is because they refuse to remove RT, but RT is out of Google. It's not on any cable channels. What is RT going to do to influence the election? But I think there's something more sinister here, Megan, which is if you look at how the Europeans have justified censoring the internet and how the United States also is starting to censor the internet, one of the main pretexts they use is that there are foreign countries trying to interfere in our discourse and we have to make sure that we're constantly monitoring the internet and have the ability to stop it. And I think not only is it helpful politically to the Democrats in 2024, and again, why aren't Iran and, Iran and China being promoted equally with Russia in terms of this story? The reason is obvious. But also, you always need a pretext of censorship. Every crisis or perceived crisis over the last mm -hmm. eight years has been used to justify censorship. Russia Gate, January 6, COVID, the war in Ukraine, on and on and on. Every single time there's some threat or perceived threat, the companies use the governments use that to say, this is why we need to protect you by censoring the internet. And that's absolutely a major part of the motivation here. That is so interesting. That makes actually perfect sense. Because going back to our earlier discussion, when did the Hunter Biden laptop story come out? It was October of 2020 and right before the election. And they used that setup, their obsession with Russia to dismiss something that clearly wasn't Russian disinformation and that the FBI knew was legit at the time. They had known for a year and yet they let all these former intelligence agents come out and those agents knew too, um, that it was legit and that it wasn't. Just, so they had set the table and then when they needed it, to tamp down this, quote, October surprise, they used it. And back to Mark Zuckerberg and others, they went along with it. The Jack Dorsey version of Twitter went along with it, suppressing the story, which polls show when voters are asked, actually might have made the difference for Trump in that election. But Democrats refuse to acknowledge any of that. I mean, the, I mean at the time, and remember, what Twitter did was brute force block any attempt to link to the New York Post, to discuss the New York Post article. If you tried to use a link, it would say this link is prohibited on Twitter. They barred and censored any attempt to use it. Facebook sent out a person named Andy Stone, who has spent his whole career as a Democratic operative, worked for Pelosi, Barbara Boxer, the DCCC. He now works at Facebook. And he said in this very snide way, I won't even give dignify this story in the New York Post, but what we will say is Facebook is now suppressing the stories. We You cannot spread it on Facebook, pending a third-party fact-checking review that, by the way, never came. And you know why? Because the story was true all along, and that's what the fact-checking would have shown. That, to me, was one of the most alarming escalations of because it wasn't just about a standard debate. It was an attempt 
by the government, by the CIA, which is where these 51 intelligence agents, of course, come from. You never leave the intelligence community, even if you now work at a consultancy. Of course, you're tied in pressuring big tech successfully and the media, not just to lie about the story or to underplay the story, but to censor it, to prevent potentially millions, but certainly hundreds of thousands of Americans from even knowing about it or seeing it in an election that ended up being decided by about 70,000 votes in three states. That level of pre-election censorship based on a complete lie that came from the intelligence community, ratified by the corporate media, and ultimately censored by big tech is why I continue to say that I think that story, though it's been discussed a lot, is still not appreciated in terms of how menacing it actually was. Mm-hmm. And then remember PBS came out, no, it was, N- it was NPR came out saying, we're not, we're not going to share this story. We, we stick to actual news and facts. And that's what our audience is interested in. We don't talk about stories that they have no interest in, like this false disinformation. Again, like- they get our public money and that's, I guess, just fine. And we're supposed to just go along with that. But I think I hadn't, I can confess, Glenn, I had not even considered that this push is setting the stage for censorship between now and the beginning of November. That makes absolute sense. And it's terrifying. That's not their role. You didn't vote for this economic downturn, right? But you could be paying for all of it at the pump, at the grocery store, and elsewhere. Financial stress can be crushing, and one solution could be DoneWithDebt.com. DoneWithDebt created new aggressive strategies designed to get you out of debt permanently without bankruptcy or loans. They can stand between you and your bill collectors and negotiate with your creditors to write off balances, cut interest, and stop penalties. The best news? Done with debt is accepting new clients right now, but you do need to hurry because some of their strategies are time sensitive and you don't want to miss out. Let Done with Debt hit the debt reset button for you and make your money yours again. Visit donewithdebt.com or call 1 888 322 1054 now. Chat with one of their debt relief strategists for free. That's donewithdebt.com, donewithdebt.com. Check it out now. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.